there is a fascinating and strange phenomenon that so many people bring to me over the last 15 years of working with people in their dating lives. And that is that when someone likes them, they feel like they're avoidant. But when someone is hard to get, they feel anxious and they chase after them. What is this thing that makes them doubt the people that like them and feel certain about wanting the people that are hard to get. And it's interesting, isn't it? Because when this happens to people, they suddenly go, I don't know what attachment style I am because it seems like I'm both. When someone is running away or when I feel like I'm chasing them, I go into anxious attachment. But when someone turns around to meet me and actually shows that they like me and they want to be there, I go into an avoidance style. So which am I? There is a crucial aspect of this phenomenon that once you understand it, will not only allow you to have much more awareness about yourself and where it's coming from, but might just land you in the healthiest relationship you've ever had. Before I get into it, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so that the next time I release a video, you get notified. Okay, so what is happening here? What is this thing that happens to us when someone's not sure about us? When we feel like we're chasing them, it feels like there's nothing we want more in the world than this person. When someone really likes us and wants us, we can find ourselves going, mm, <laughs> I'm not sure. I want you to consider for a moment the fact that when someone is making you chase, all of your energy is focused on whether you can get that person. You have one singular mission, try to get this person to like me back. And that mission tends to occupy all of our bandwidth. It doesn't really allow much space to ask whether this person that we're trying to get is someone we want deep down, whether they are someone who is worth getting. And it also, when someone's sort of running away, when I imagine them literally sort of drifting away or in the distance, we're not seeing them close enough to see their flaws, to really assess the cracks in their personality or their behavior. We are consumed by the desire to get them. How many people out there have ever had the experience of finally getting someone, and then when that person turns around to meet you, you find that you're miserable, that that relationship was one of the worst relationships of your life. And yet, when we're in the getting phase, we're just focused on trying to get them. Now, the person who turns around to meet us, the person that actually likes us back, the person that, in a sense, makes it easy, it's simple. They want to be with us. They want to be around us. They like us. They've made it known. We no longer have all of this space taken up by trying to pursue. Instead, we've freed up all this bandwidth to be able to just assess the person in front of us and go, are they right for me? Do I like them? And we tend to put more focus on the flaws. What's wrong with it? Our human brain, once it's figured out a certain situation in life, once we've got something, what do we tend to do? We go straight on to what's the next problem? What's the next thing I have to solve? So when we have a person in front of us that we like that doesn't represent any more work, we simply look at them and we start finding flaws. Now, sometimes we're right and that person isn't right for us. Other times we run the risk of turning away people who could actually make us very happy and create a beautiful relationship with us. At the essence of this, is the difference between being a leader and being a follower. When we're in leader mode, we decide what we want in our lives in a relationship, what we want in a person. We decide what's important from the point of view of our needs. And then when we find someone who can provide those things, we lean into that. When we meet someone who is elusive and difficult and hard to get, we conclude that this already isn't meeting one of my core needs, which is the need for my love, my affection, my attention to be reciprocated. So we just turn away from that person. When we're in follower mode, we haven't decided what we value. So we are looking for somebody else to tell us what is valuable. And naturally, when someone is elusive and scarce and hard to get, it's their way of, whether intentionally or not, creating value around themselves. 
And when we see that and we go, oh, I don't know what I want and I don't know what's valuable. If you're running away, if you're hard to get, you must be valuable. I'm going to chase you. So the follower ends up chasing and we can spend our entire lives in that pattern of chasing people who are elusive and thinking that anyone who actually turns to meet us isn't valuable, isn't worth anything. Leaders have decided already what's valuable to them. And they don't think it's less valuable because it's there in front of them. In fact, it's the opposite. If the leader has determined that what's valuable to me is someone who actually wants me back alongside some important other things, then when you find that in a person, you go, this is it. This is the thing. At the crux of this is people not trusting themselves. When we're a follower, we look to other people to tell us what's valuable. When we're a leader, we have decided what's valuable and we do that from a place of confidence and self-trust. So the question becomes, how do I get to a place in my life where I actually begin to trust myself? Maybe you're watching this and going, my God, my whole life I've been taking my cues from everybody else and not actually getting in touch with trusting my own decisions. If you're in that place, this is what I do with people when I have my retreat. I spend six days with people working on their self-confidence, on their internal compass, and their ability to trust themselves and their own decisions so that when they come out of that program, they're in alignment about what they want in life. And all of a sudden, they're able to orient their life towards things that actually lead to long-term happiness instead of things that lead to massive pain. And I have watched over 15 years of coaching people, the same people running headfirst into pain over and over again. That never changes unless you do the work to break the cycle. So I wanna offer you a, an invitation to break that cycle and finally find peace and happiness. The retreat is taking place this October is from the 9th to the 15th. It's gonna be in Florida, and it's gonna be an extraordinary six days that we spend doing the deep work that is gonna allow you to be the happiest you've ever been. And when you feel happy and in control and self-trusting and self-confident, the results that you're looking for, like finding love, become natural, they happen organically. But if you don't do that work, no amount of dating advice is gonna make the difference. For all of the information about the retreat and how to apply it, go to mhretreat.com. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.